Hey you guys, what's up? It is Jack Beck filming another video for you guys. So, a few months ago, I made an underwear lookbook video for the year 2018. I will link it below for those of you guys who don't remember, but I filmed that video in a hotel. It was a one-star hotel. Never again, let me just say, never again. There was blood on the curtains and not just like an oops, like I got like a paper cut type of blood. It was like a, um... I'm like, oops, my throat was slit wide open. Like that type of blood. There was also a dead bug in the bathtub. The phone didn't work. So yeah, that experience was absolutely horrible. And with that fresh in my mind, it's funny because about a week later, I got an email from Mr. B&B asking me to make a sponsored video for them. And those of you guys who do not know what Mr. B&B is, it's the gay version of Airbnb. I love gay shit. Like I just like eat it up. But pretty much what it is, if you are a gay man who has an apartment or a spare room in your apartment, or just a couch that you want to run out. You put it up as a listing on the Mr. B&B app and gay travelers that are coming to your area or need some place to stay, they can rent out your room or your couch. And it's all gay, guys. So you don't have to worry that you're gonna put your apartment up for listing and some like devout pilgrim, I should say pilgrim, some devout, you know, like Puritan era Christian will enter your apartment and you know, like perform an exorcism on you in the middle of your sleep. Cause you know what I mean? It's all gay men. You don't have to worry about homophobia. They have tons of insurance. Everyone gets verified. So if you're interested in meeting fellow gay people in your area and you are looking to make a little bit of extra money and host, then yeah, definitely download the app. The link in the description box below. So they reached out to me and they were like, Hey Jack, why don't you make a video where you host somebody in your apartment and you film it and you put it up on YouTube. And I was like, Okay, you know what? Let's try this. This could be a shit show. I I have no idea what will happen. I feel like I have been waiting for a moment like this since I took that one hospitality and tourism marketing class in high school. Hey, Mrs. O'Neill. I just want to formally apologize though really quick to um, Hilton, to Marriott, because ooh, uh, they got, honey, they got a big storm coming. My luxury resort and spa that I'm turning this apartment into, it's gonna make their resort and spas look like this. Thank you. The Marriott, one star now. So without further ado, I officially and cordially invite you, the viewer, to the grand opening of Meridu Manor Luxury Resort and Spa. So let's start at the beginning of the journey. This video has been like weeks in the making because it took me forever to find somebody who wanted to stay in my apartment who also didn't mind me filming them. My friend who is practically, I know this sounds like, but he's practically like my manager pretty much at this point. You guys know Brett, but I put him in charge and he eventually found somebody. I knew nothing about this person at the time at all, but I did clean my entire apartment. You know, I made sure there wasn't a dead bug in the bathtub or blood on the curtains. But yeah, I got everything ready. This person was set to arrive at 1030 in the morning. If you guys know me, ooh. Daddy does not like to be awake in the AM at all. Daddy doesn't like to do anything before like three. Don't wake daddy. That game is inspired by me. So I brainstormed and I was like, okay, you know what? How can I make a lasting impression? What would I personally want to arrive to if I was staying at somebody's apartment? And I decided that what I'd want upon arrival is a vodka cranberry and a lay or something like that. So that's what I did. I got my apartment entirely ready. I made this person a mixed drink for their arrival. Ooh, so tropical. <laughs> they got to my apartment at like 1045. I was like, everyone get into position. Like my roommate was wandering around like half naked. She was in her sports bra and I was like, no, 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 no. This is, do you look luxury five star right now? No. If you don't look luxury five star, you either go into your room or in the closet, okay? So anyway, after I made the apartment look perfect, I went down and I let him in. just say after I handed him that mixed drink and laid him there was a twinkle in that boy's eyes like he knew he was like wow does Beyonce stay here you know when she visits LA what about the Obamas that's exactly what I wanted him to think and yeah I took his luggage from him like a gentleman like a good bellhop would 
I held the door open for him as well. I showed him the pool. I literally was about to do anything for him, okay? If there had been a puddle on the ground that had splashed out of the pool, I would have thrown myself on it and let him walk over me. I will admit though, for a quick second, I was lusting after this boy just a little bit because you guys know, first of all, everyone in LA is really attractive and you guys know my type, but I was like, snap out of it. We don't mix business with pleasure, okay? So I gave him a quick tour of my apartment. I showed him the room that he was gonna be staying in. He stayed in this room right here. When he saw this room, I was hit in the face with something and I was like, what is that? It was his socks. I had knocked his socks right off of him, okay? So yeah, then I explained to him because I genuinely had plans for the day. I was like, okay, here's what we're gonna do. Now that I showed you the apartment, I'm gonna take you to Hollywood Boulevard. I'm gonna give you a little tour. I'm gonna be your tour guide for the day. Then we're gonna go to the beach because everyone needs to see Santa Monica, the pier. And then afterwards, I am going to make you dinner, okay? Hospitality 101. So yeah, that was the plan. And we hopped into a car and we headed right to Hollywood Boulevard. So we are on Hollywood Boulevard, obviously. And we're starting off at the, um, I never know what it's called. It's like a Chinese theater. It's Graham. Yeah, it's, Chine it's Graham's Chinese theater? It is now. Movie. Anyway, I was gonna show you Taylor Lautner's handprints, Robert Pattinson's handprints, but unfortunately, the Star Wars premiere is happening. Thanks, Star Wars. Flop Wars. I feel stressed and depressed. I feel stuck in a room. It's time we get a brand new start. So get dressed, pack your bags, feel the heart. will admit if you've never been to LA Hollywood Boulevard the Walk of Fame <laughs> we could not go oh, yeah, 15 yeah, seconds without people no, screaming no, into no. our faces <laughs> that's Hollywood Boulevard for you but anyway the tour officially wrapped he was shook by that tour like he was bottoming for all the information that I was giving him but yeah we checked the tour off of our to-do list and then we moved on to our next stop which was the beach Are we going to the beach But yeah, I never see sun ever. So I'm gonna die today, and I'm really excited. I hated there were birds. I hate like when birds fly over you. you. They were like 30 feet away. Like, I know, but they shit. I don't like birds. I don't like their shit. I don't like the sun. I hate being barefoot on the beach because I'm afraid I'm gonna step on glass, razor blades. I decided to be barefoot on the beach this time. It never happens. Within five minutes, do you know what I stepped on? A knife, legit. I stepped on a knife. Like somebody had put this orange, it was a plastic knife, but still, who is responsible for this? That's what I was like. It was probably like a homophobe who had a crystal ball or something and knew I was gonna be walking there. I don't know, but anyway, I kept making plans in my head for what would be the most fun thing to do on the beach. And A, I wanted to go on the Ferris wheel, and B, I just wanted to kind of like nap in tan, which is exactly what we did. to the boardwalk and he was looking for a shirt and I was gonna go check to see if the Ferris wheel was working because the Ferris wheel hadn't been operating for like a full two hours that we were there and I was like something's wrong but okay I will admit it I found the guy cute it was just like in my mind I was like okay like we could go on the Ferris wheel it'll just be like a cute moment I didn't know he had a boyfriend at the time I found out he had a boyfriend but at the time I did not know that and you guys know me I'm on this love Simon kick right now and there is a kiss on a Ferris wheel in that movie and I was like okay this is like my moments and even if it's only for a thumbnail or something like that to clickbait everyone into watching this video it'll still be cute like it'll be a cute thing and you never know what could happen but 
It turns out that the Ferris wheel was not working, and that's all that I wanted to go to the beach for. Yeah, I'm pretty sure the whole thing is closed. No. Yeah, the ride portion of the pier ended up being rented out for some party or something like that. Believe me, I don't understand how you can rent out a whole pier. It was homophobes probably rented it out. I swear to God. I'm not exaggerating when I say one damn ride on that entire pier was open for me and this boy to ride. One ride. So I was like, okay, I can adapt. I can have my Love, Simon moments on this ride. So me and him got on. Long and behold, who shows up? The homophobe who left, well, I don't, he wasn't the homophobe who left the knife, but he could have been because he kicked me and him off of this ride. My dream of having a Love, Simon moment on top of a Ferris wheel or even on a small merry-go-round ride was shattered before my eyes. We eventually left Santa Monica Pier. On the way out, I asked one of those, like one of those genie fortune teller things in the boxes, Zorro. I asked him for a fortune and he told me something about like, I'm gonna get a house one day. And I was like, oh, Damn house, I want a boy. But anyway, it doesn't matter. On the way back to my apartment, because I was gonna cook this guy dinner, I actually found out that he had a boyfriend. This wasn't filmed or anything like that. We were just talking about it, and good thing it wasn't filmed, because um, in that moment, you would have seen me um, stabbing myself in the heart with that knife that went on, almost went in my foot on the beach. Anyway, we got back to my apartment. It was time for me to cook dinner. Like I said, the Italian blood was coursing through my veins. I can make chicken parmesan. So I looked up a recipe online. Connor, which is the boy's name. I don't know if I ever told you his name. Anyway, Connor was watching Netflix. blood like was not in my veins that day so we started eating and clearly he got dinner and a damn show that evening too because I did not have a wine glass opener like the corkscrew thing so we stabbed a hole into it with a screwdriver and I tried to pour it out that way yeah this like I had high hopes I really did but I'm not good at things especially when there's a camera on me I cannot do it in the wine case. <laughs> Throw this. What could I have improved on? This whole dinner experience was just very, was the cherry very smooth, on top. natural. The cherry on top of a fa fantastic evening. <laughs> a magnificent <laughs> evening. Oh my god. We eventually wrapped up dinner, and this is where I kind of stopped filming because I had put a camera in front of this boy's face the entire night, and I didn't want to keep doing it, but yeah. We eventually went to bed. I slept on my Craigslist couch in the living room area, so that was a night to remember, and I didn't film him leaving or anything the next day just because... Do you think I wanted to get camera ready at... 9 a.m. the next day, no. I didn't want to be ridiculous and have somebody come over early to film, so yeah. I think the experience was fun. I've never actually had somebody like that stay over at my apartment, but yeah, I think I delivered a five-star experience. That was, honestly, like Mrs. O'Neill, she can just retire, knowing damn well that one of her students, at least, has succeeded in hospitality and tourism. Me. I really thought this was a fun video, though. I thought it was a cool adventure. I love doing things where I get out of my comfort zone or where I'm forced out of my apartment because I make so many videos in this room, you know? But yeah, I just want to remind you guys, like I said, this is a sponsored video, so Mr. b, &B download it in the link in the description box below. It always helps me out so much when you guys help out my sponsors because then they come back. Anyway, like I said, download Mr. b, &B in the description box below if you are interested. Thank you guys so, so much for watching this video. Follow me on Twitter at Fisher Jack Game. Instagram is jmerido. My Snapchat is jmerido as well. Comment below with your thoughts. What did you think? What would you rate my hotel experience out of five stars? One being bad, five being I need to stay there. Also, if you want another video by me, I will link below last week's video. I take you guys into a haunted house, do a whole Q&A video. I answer the question, boxers, briefs, or thongs. What do I prefer to wear? I will also link below the video that I did the week before where I tell the story about how YouTube... <laughs> 
created the demise of a few of my relationships because guys left me because of my YouTube channel, guys didn't like my YouTube videos, all that stuff. So both of those videos will be linked below. Thank you guys so, so much. I seriously love you. I can't thank you guys enough for watching my videos every single week. And yeah, I'll see you guys next time. Bye guys.